committed team of players who all failed to qualify for the World Cup with their countries actually win the World Cup? Great question. Let's find out on Football Manager. In fact, in today's video, we're going to run three different simulations with three dream teams at the Qatar 2022 World Cup. And 11 of players who failed to qualify, the ultimate dream team from 100 simulations, and the backup ultimate dream team. So pause here for a second and let me know which of these three teams that you see on the screen right now is going to do the best at the World Cup. There is also a fourth bonus simulation that we're going to do, but you'll have to stick around until the end of the video to see that. But first, our best of the rest 11. While doom scrolling on TikTok recently, I came across this guy, Thiago, and his video of a dream team of 11 players who will not be competing at this year's World Cup. Which is perfect, as I had considered putting together my own team of unqualified players, but you know what the internet's like. For every player I pick, there'd be someone telling me I should have picked someone else. And this way I can deflect all of those questions onto Thiago. So anyway, let's check out his picks. Links to Thiago's TikTok and YouTube channel in the description, by the way. Let's see, our goalie is going to be Gigi Donnarumma, not even a debate. Rumor, We're course. playing 4-3-3, left back for us, Andy Robertson. And our centre-back duo of Milan Sklinia and David Alaba is pretty rock solid. Right back yep. is probably the weakest spot in this team, Davide Calabria. The midfield, poo, we have Wilfred and Didi as the central defensive midfielder. And then the Italian duo, Marco Verratti and Nicola Barella. Yeah, pretty cool Italy. team so far, but the attack is even better. Left winger, Federico Chiesa. Right oh, winger, Mohamed Salah. And up front, there can only be one who else, Erling Haaland. Heavy Italian influence, of course, but hey, they are the biggest nation not to qualify. Overall, a very strong team, although I think we could have squeezed in a bit more South American representation. Quadrado, perhaps. And if there's anyone you think should have been picked but wasn't named in that 11, let us know in the comments. So I went into the editor and gave these 11 players all the same nationality. But which nation? Who else but the worst performing side in my recent 100 World Cup simulations? Saudi Arabia. So to quickly recap, the Saudis only got out of the groups one time in 100 simulations, and yeah, they are in a very tough group, Group C, with Argentina, Mexico, and Poland. So can this team take them further? Let's run the sim and find out. Well, just looking at the 2022 fixtures here, we see an immediate impact in the friendlies that have been played. They have won every single match, and we see Mohamed Salah, Erling Haaland, Verratti, Chiesa, they're getting on the score sheet every time. But friendlies are one thing, competitive World Cup games against top-level opposition is quite another. Now, tough opening game against Argentina. A finished goalless, so on paper a credible result. But if we look at this, I think there's a case to make that Saudi Arabia should have won this one. Mohamed Salah missed a penalty in the second half. They also had Calabria sent off. Also, a strange thing to pick up on here. In the video, we saw Thiago talked about 4-3-3 formation. In the friendlies that I looked at, that's what Saudi Arabia played. But we see here, for the Argentina game, they went with wing-backs. And that meant that they brought in this guy, Rafael Zichos. Now, this wasn't a player that I was familiar with. Based on his name, I thought he was a Brazilian who'd been playing in Saudi Arabia for a few years. However, I see his here, his other nationality is German. Looks like he played his entire career in Germany as well. So anyway, I looked him up online, by which I mean I went onto Wikipedia, and I found out he was indeed born in Saudi Arabia. In real life, he hasn't declared for any particular nation. I guess the game just decided he should turn out for Saudi Arabia. And who wouldn't want to play in a team like that? So into the second game with Poland, we see they're sticking with that wing-back formation, that three at the back. It's 2-2 two -two this time, so a few more goals. It did actually blow a two-goal lead. Haaland put the Saudis 2-0 up, but Lewandowski got Poland back in it. So that meant it all hinged on the final group stage game with Mexico, which they won 2-0. Mo Salah with both goals. Andy Robertson injured, unfortunately. And you see here they returned to the 4-3-3 formation, so playing to their strengths with their best 11 players. And that got them qualification in top spot from Group C. I mean, it was close. It was close. If they hadn't got that win over Mexico, they wouldn't have made it. And they just edge out Argentina to the top spot on goal difference. Mexico just missing out by a point. So we see here in the second round, they get Denmark. And we see they're in the top half of the draw. So they're in there with the Netherlands with Germany, Croatia, and Brazil as well. It's going to be a big ask, but let's see how far they can go. And they go through a late strike from Erling Haaland, giving Saudi Arabia the 1-0 win over Denmark. To the wing-back formation, though, I noticed, with Chikos in the middle, although it looks like he played pretty well, and Al Farage coming into the midfield, so... 
hopefully that's just rotation and we'll get back to full strength for the quarterfinals. And you see here the full list of second round results. Bit of a shock there as England get knocked out by Senegal. But we also see the Netherlands at the top there thumping Iran. And that's who our team of non-qualified players will face next. And it was a close-fought thing. 1-1 Haaland and Wijnaldum with the goals. But we see here it went in Saudi Arabia's favour in the penalty shootout. 5-4. So De Jong missing a penalty for the Netherlands. Nobody missing a penalty for Saudi Arabia. Even our guy Rafael Chikos getting in there. But again, manager René Havard sticking with this 3-5-2 for the semi-final. And it was not to be. Germany edging out our dream team in extra time. And looking at the stats, a really woeful attacking performance. Only three shots, none on target. Haaland on a 6.3, Mo Salah on a 5.9. Chikos and Al Farage only getting 6.2s. I mean, where was Andy Robertson? Where was Chiesa? Okay, Andy Robertson had done his hamstring in, but no injury, no suspension for Chiesa, so not sure what happened there. Argentina won the other semi, and our team would lose the third place playoff, so finishing fourth in the end, not helped by Skriniar getting sent off. And just in case you're wondering, Germany won the tournament. All right, so that's our 11 made up of players who couldn't qualify for the World Cup with their nations. I mean, we only put in 11, so maybe with a few substitutes added, we wouldn't have had to rely on Rafael Chicos or Al Farage when needed, and we could have done a bit better. But now, uh, let's take the ultimate dream team from my 100 World Cup simulations and see how they do. And this time we've chosen Tunisia, the second worst performing team from those 100 simulations. I didn't go with Saudi Arabia again for reasons that will become apparent a little bit later. Now, if Fiago's team of unqualified players was quite Italian-centric, this team is very much Anglo-centric. Eight of the players we've added here were originally English, so it'll be interesting to check in on the England team in this tournament as well. In fact, they pop up in the friendlies played by Tunisia in advance of the World Cup. We see they won... All of them against some easy opposition, Burundi, Japan, Malawi. Decent win over Norway just before the World Cup, but a defeat away to England in September. But let's see if they can beat France, Denmark or Australia to one of the qualification spots. Okay, now Tunisia have also gone for a 4-3-3, whereas the Dream 11 was based around a 4-4-2 or 4-2-4, but that's okay, they've got most of our guys in there. But it was 1-1 in the opening game against Australia. So really a match they should have been winning. And Mbappe giving Tunisia the lead. But a late equaliser from Rustic giving the Aussies a point. But they got the big win over Denmark in the second game. Foden and Mbappe supplying the goals in the first half. Denmark scoring through Vind late on. But they couldn't take away the win from Tunisia. Now they're sticking with the 4-3-3. This time Tomori is back in defence. I think he was unfit for the first game. They're not playing Depay as a starter, but I suppose it's good to have that option on the bench. And a massive result in the final group stage game. 2-0 win against France. Mbappe scoring against his former countrymen. Harry Kane getting the second goal. And that means, of course, two wins and a draw. Tunisia, our dream 11, top the group. And set up a second round clash with Mexico. If we pull up the tree here, we can see they're in the lower half of the draw. So there's a potential quarter-final with England or maybe Ecuador. And we've got Croatia, Spain, South Korea, Switzerland in this side of the draw as well. And our Dream Eleven get the big win over Mexico. Kane and Sterling given a little English flavour to the score sheet. Again, they went with an unchanged lineup, so they got a pretty settled team. If you look at the stats, though, Mexico did have the better of the chances and the better XG, so they might feel a little bit aggrieved at that result. And you can see the rest of the results here. Bit of a surprise as South Korea knock out Switzerland. Spain out as well. Tough game they had against Croatia. Germany out in a big clash with Belgium. And Argentina knocked out by France. But we see England beat Ecuador. And that means it's the Dream 11 with its eight English players against England, the country they left behind in the quarterfinal. So that means no Harry Kane, no Raheem Sterling, no Phil Foden, no Jude Bellingham, and somehow they still won. England still won. England won 2-0 against this team that has eight of their best players. So it's Rashford and Sancho with the goals at this time, actually. I mean, Tunisia perhaps edged it on the stats. Tunisia again playing with this settled team. I mean, maybe if we get this... Skiri guy out of the defensive midfield position, 
get the pie on the pitch, it might have made a difference. So let's have a look at how England lined up actually without them. The Rashford played as the lone striker. Saka and Sancho on the wings. They pushed Alexander Arnold into midfield without Foden there. And we've got Rice and Henderson. So, you know, it's still a good team. There's still a lot of experience here. Uh, we've got Dean Henderson in goal, Walker and Shaw in the fullback positions, and Chalabar and Stones in the centre of the park. So perhaps the defence is looking weaker than it otherwise might, and obviously no Harry Kane, but still a decent team, I suppose. So, yeah, there we go. Our Dream Eleven are out at the quarterfinal stage. And if you ever wanted confirmation of how OP England are on Football Manager... Here it is. Even without those eight players in the squad, they still go on to win the World Cup. And last but not least, it's our kind of our second string dream team. Those players who appeared in the dream team across the hundred simulations, almost but not quite enough to get into that first eleven. So we've got the likes of Virgil van Dijk, we've got Christian Eriksen, we've got Romelo Lukaku. We've only got one English player. Let's see how they do. And the nation we've chosen for this Dream B team? Costa Rica, who were, of course, the third worst performing nation in terms of getting out of the group stages across those 100 simulations. Difficult to gauge the impact this team has had in the friendlies. There was an away defeat to France early in the year. But then they've had the Nations League, the CONCACAF version of the Nations League, to play in, so not really that top-level opposition, and they chose Luxembourg for their warm-up friendly. Now, of course, in all of these dream teams, we've only named 11 players, so the rest of the squad is filled out by regular players of that nationality. One interesting thing with the Costa Rica team is, of course, as goalkeeper. They've got Keylor Navas, so um, I noticed in the friendlies he was starting ahead of Justin Bijlow, but no worries, still a top-class goalkeeper. Now, let's see if this Costa Rica team can get ahead of Germany or Spain. Or maybe both of them. And we start out with a decent 2-0 win against Japan. Thomas Muller in both of the goals. And a hard-fought 1-1 draw in the second game against Germany. Thomas Muller scoring against his, well, I guess his former countrymen from a parallel universe. Philip Max getting a late penalty to equalise. Hmm. And again, we're going for this 4-3-3 formation. Interesting how... Most of the teams so far have defaulted to that. Again, 1-1 in the final group game with Spain. Rashford was sent off in this one as well. And again, it was a late equaliser that denied them the win. But two draws against the big opponents, a win against Japan. Is it going to be enough? Yes, just about. They're qualifying second behind Spain. Germany eliminated with only four points. And a tough game against Croatia in the second round. If they can get past that hurdle, there's potentially Portugal or Switzerland in the quarterfinal. And they're in the same half of the draw as England and France, so it's going to be tough. And it was a tough. It was a 3-2 win, but look how the goals went in. Kramaric had put Croatia 2 up. And then the comeback started with Lukaku, scoring twice in the last 10 minutes to force extra time. And then Thomas Muller, that German DNA, that German footballing DNA coming through for a late, late extra time winner. But no real shocks anywhere in this round. Portugal get the win against Switzerland, which means they're up next for our second string dream team. Oh, the second round went to extra time. This one went all the way to penalties. Nil-nil against Portugal. But an epic penalty shootout. Costa Rica eventually winning... Seven, six, eight penalties each for the teams here. And look at that, Cristiano Ronaldo even missed one. So on to the semi-finals we go, where they're going to face England again. <laughs> are we going to have England derail another dream team? No, England are out and it was the only English player in this second string dream team, Marcus Rashford, who put them out. All of that means in the final it's a rematch of the 2014 quarterfinal. Costa Rica against the Netherlands. So we've had our Saudi Arabia unqualified 11 dream team finish fourth. We've had our actual dream team knocked out in the quarterfinals by England. So can this second string dream team actually win it? Oh, no is the answer. No, they lose out to the Netherlands 3-2. And in the cruelest way possible as well. Look at that. Netherlands scoring with a penalty deep, deep into stoppage time. Lukaku missed a penalty in the first half as well. But now for our bonus simulation. What would happen if we put all three of these teams into the World Cup at the same time? Okay, so we start off in Group C and wow, this is crazy already. 
all four teams finishing on four points, but Saudi Arabia coming out on top, our dream team here. So we see they've got a 1-1 draw with Argentina in the opening game, then actually a 1-0 defeat to Poland in the second game, but then turning up big in the final game, 4-0 win over Mexico, that goal difference being the crucial factor in our unqualified 11 going through first. So our dream team 11, Tunisia, this time they did actually manage to get that opening win over Australia. They then lost to France, got a draw against Denmark, but four points was enough for second. That means we're going to have Saudi Arabia, Tunisia in the next round. And Group E this time we see Costa Rica clearly topping the group. A 1-0 win over Germany in the first game. Goretzka this time scoring the goal. And then massive 2-0 win over Spain. Lukaku and Rashford with the goals. Then somewhat surprisingly, perhaps they'd already qualified by this point, but a 2-2 draw with Japan. Sergio Ramos getting both the goals. And that gives us a this second round lineup. So Saudi Arabia, Tunisia, as we noted before, we're getting that game. We're also going to have Costa Rica, Canada. England, again, they've got nine players missing this time with Rashford being in the Costa Rica team, but they still made it through. Let's take a look at the Costa Rica, Canada game first. And it was a close one, 1-1. One, one. It went to penalties. Costa Rica took it 6-5. Lukaku did miss, but two players missed for Canada. You see a Costa Rica do this time have Van Dijk available. They also got to name Timo Werner in the squad this time, but as you can see here, he's just recovering from an injury. And also on the injury front, bad news, Thomas Muller is out for the rest of the tournament. But now let's take a look at that Tunisia-Saudi Arabia clash. And well, this was a bit of a stalemate. Nil, nil. And then look at all the penalty takers who are listed there. It actually went 21-20 in the end, eventually finishing in Saudi Arabia's favour. So our dream team, our ultimate dream team, not so ultimate after all, eliminated in the quarterfinals when they had a solo run at it, eliminated in the second round here. And in addition to that penalty madness, we see here South Korea knocking out Brazil and overpowered England without half of their squad still beaten Senegal. So Saudi Arabia will take on the Netherlands in the quarterfinal round. Costa Rica gets South Korea. And there's another potential head-to-head -head clash looming in the semi-final. And we're halfway there as our unqualified World Eleven gets a massive win here. 4-1 over the Netherlands. Al Farage even getting himself in among the goal scorers with Haaland and Chiesa. And yes, Costa Rica will be there in the last four as well. Lukaku and Rashford getting the goals against South Korea to set up quite the clash in the next round. England still overpowered, getting through on penalties against France. Portugal completing the semi-final lineup. And again, we had a tight game here. Our Costa Rica team, our second string Dream Eleven, took the lead twice, but our unqualified Eleven of Saudi Arabia picked them back twice and eventually... They won 5-3 on a penalty shootout. They don't really miss on the penalties. Chicos was in there again. Ericsson unfortunately missed. And elsewhere in the semi-final round, England finally formed. Also knocked out on penalties by Portugal. And here's the third place playoff. I've left the England team up so you can see who they're picking with all those players missing. Again, we see Alexander-Arnold pushed into midfield and Kyle Walker at right back. The AI doesn't want to play Trent at right back for some reason. But anyway... England get the 2-0 win. And look at that. Erling Haaland does the business for our Saudi Arabia team in the final, scoring both goals as they win 2-0. We have three of our Dream Team players taking the top three spots in the Golden Ball. Rashford is there in third, Verratti is second, and Haaland takes the Golden Ball itself. Donnarumma, best goalkeeper, and quite a few of that initial team of players who didn't qualify for the World Cup making up the Dream Team. We've got Rashford in there as well, and we've still got an English player in there. So, in the end, hats off to you, Fiago, for your ultimate ball knowledge. The team you selected ultimately won the World Cup, something the other two Dream Teams couldn't manage. And also, your team came out on top when the squads were pitted against each other. And check out this video here if you want to see more crazy World Cup results, but with real teams.